Hello, it's that time again. Time for the Steam Winter Sale. As always, Darren and I will be making our own picks and predictions. I have been given his list, so I don't think that there's going to be any crossover. His picks tend to be a bit more radical and interesting, to be honest. I, therefore, have just tried to make mine a bit equal by adding a bit more to what I have. What I basically did this year is I paid attention to the autumn sale, the fall sale, and basically wrote down a massive list of games that were either really good discounts or just games that looked really interesting to me. And so that's basically what I'm doing for this is I'm using the information from the fall sale as a prediction to what will be good for the winter sale. There are a couple on here that are hopefuls, but most of these, as I said, were on sale before and should be on sale again. And, you know, fingers crossed, even a better deal because it's the big winter sale. I've broken my games into a few different categories. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one. 2020 has been a rough year, and there's just something about this year that has made me for a while now think that the kind of game I want to play is a game that's a world that's probably, honestly, even a little bit worse than the one right now, but that you feel you have more control over. So this category is Build Your World. The first game on this list is a game called Raft. Raft is a game where you are stuck on a raft and you need to try to survive. You need to gather food, you need to gather resources so that you can build your raft bigger and bigger, and also try not to get eaten by sharks. Raft was at 33% off in the fall sale, making it about $14. Next is a game I think that I've mentioned before on a pick video, and that is The Forest. I played The Forest before when it was in early access. It still looks to be very good. It still looks to be great for building, for survival. It's just a great first-person survival game where you get to build your own fort and gather resources. In the fall sale, it was 50% off, which makes it only about $10, and I'd expect to see it at that again. Next is a game by Clay, which also makes games I've recommended before, like Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together. This is a similar style game, except it's more building a base that your characters can survive in. If you want a free version of this type of game, Fallout Shelter is still available on Steam and I think the Google Play Store. That is a lot of fun. And because I put so many hours into that and because I enjoyed that so much and because I enjoy Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together, that's what makes me think that I'm going to really like Oxygen Not Included when I finally get it and start playing it. It was at 50% off. That made it about $13. I'd expect it to be at that or a bit lower. The next game, it's kind of an iffy one to recommend. I haven't played it but I've always wanted to play it and I still want to play it so I probably will but the reviews kind of get lower and lower as the game goes on and that game is Ark Survival Evolved. I love the idea of capturing and training dinosaurs. I just have heard that they've added so many things that kind of take away from that and make it a bit more futuristic instead of past and basic, but I still want to give it a try. And in the fall, it was 80% off, which made it $10. And I'm kind of thinking for that price, it's probably worth giving a try. Now, the last one for the build your own world category is one that, you know, is a finger crossed, hopeful there'll be a sale on. It is grounded. There was no sale for this in the fall, but again, I'm hoping that there will be one now. At base, it's $30, which isn't terrible. I'm sure you'd probably, if you like this kind of game, put 30 hours into it. Grounded is, I mean, you've probably seen the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It's basically like that. You are very tiny and you have to survive by building resources and fending off insects to build your own little fort and area. I've seen a few hours of play of this game. It just looks beautiful and it looks like it works very well. I'm really tempted to play this game sooner rather than later. Next category is just two of the, what I would label big games. The first is one that I recommended before. I think I might have even recommended it in the summer and that is Witcher 3. And yes, I've recommended it before, but here's the difference. I've now played it. I played it as well as the DLC. I put in over the summer 
170 hours. Witcher 3 basically got me through a rough summer. 170 hours, I enjoyed it. It has characters that, even in their side stories, are just really well thought out and really well executed. There's some fantastic voice work in the game. It looks beautiful. It's not perfect. Like, I won't say it's perfect. Those that listen to the podcast know that it's very tough for me to say that a game is perfect, but they have done some fantastic things with it. It was pretty much everything that my friends had recommended that it would be. The Witcher 3, 70% off, so that was $10 for the main game, or Game of the Year was $16. I would definitely recommend that you get the Game of the Year. The DLC is good, it basically adds whole maps to the game, and on top of that, there's just an ending to one of the DLCs that feels like a much more satisfying ending than the one we got in the main game. So I would definitely just say go for it. If you want to play Witcher 3, get the Game of the Year, which would have the DLC included, and enjoy. Next up, Red Dead Redemption 2. This was on the sale about 33% off. I think it was about $44. I've seen it recently on Fanatical for about 38 so you might actually save yourself a few bucks more if it isn't that low on Steam. It's just a game, again, that I've seen some people playing online. It looks great. I do want to play it, and it's another one that I think, like Witcher 3, that I will just put a lot of time into and just enjoy. Next category would be collections. There are three collections here that I want to talk about. The first one is one that I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned before, which is Dishonored. The Dishonored Bundle would have games 1, 2, and 3, as well as the uh, DLC for Dishonored. You would get all three games for uh, about $22.50, which I guess I should probably say it this way. It's Dishonored, Dishonored 2, and Dishonored Death of the Outsider. There isn't a Dishonored 3 yet, but you would get those three games for $22.50 and the Dishonored DLC. I think that is probably worth it. I put a lot of time into the first game. I'm looking forward to playing the others, I just haven't yet. Next up would be Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I've not played it, but I keep hearing good things about it, and it seems like the type of thing that I would enjoy. In the fall sale, it was 50% off, which made it $16. Next up would be a newer collection, which is the Halo Master Chief Collection. That came out this year. I have only ever been able to play Halo at rare times where I had a friend who had Halo on Xbox, now we can all play through it all. Even though it's a very new collection to Steam, it was 35% off, which made it $25. It's multiple games. I think that if you like this kind of game, this kind of shooting game, I mean, I'm going to make a wild assumption here, but I think even the single player stuff would probably be worth the $25. If you do any of the multiplayer or games like that with your friends, it's the value is going to be even better. My next category has to do with kind of continuing with that theme of 2020 games, games that came out this year, and also collections. Well, the first one is a collection anyway, and that is the Henry Stickman collection. Henry Stickman just looks beautiful and funny and simple. It's described in the store page as a choose-your-own-adventure game. There are six games within this collection. It was 20% off in the fall, which made it $12, so that'd be about $2 per game. It looks good, I want to give it a try. Next up would be Creeks, C-R-E-A-K-S. This game was 20% off, which made it about $16. Creeks appears to be a point-and-click puzzle adventure game, similar to Machinarium, which was another game by the same designer. Amanita Design. Amanita Design is really well known for games like Samorost, Machinarium, Chuchel, which we have talked about before, Pilgrims. So it makes no surprise, I think, to people who realize those names I'm throwing out there. Creeks would definitely be on my list. It's definitely one that I want to play. It is new this year, though. In the fall sale, at least it was 20% off. And $16 for this kind of game, especially newer, if you want to get it new, I think it's probably going to be worth it. Next, no surprise, Procession to Cavalry. We already talked about the predecessor to this game, Four Last Things. It looks funny. It looks like the same kind of art style of taking old classic paintings and readjusting sections of them to be the characters. I want to play it. I think Darren probably already has played it. It was 30% off in the fall sale, which makes it only $7. And again, this is a new game this year. 
a big game that was new this year is one called Outer Worlds. Now don't confuse this with the one that I'm pretty sure is going to be on Darren's pick, which is Outer Wilds. Outer Worlds is much more, at least what looks to me, to be a kind of run and gun, first person shooter, but very story rich game. And the trailers just look beautiful. So I'm tempted to play this soon. It was already at 50% off in the fall sale and that made it about $31. I'm hoping, you know, again, fingers crossed that we'll get something slightly better this time. Two more that I'm really, these are really finger crossed ones because these are new. I don't think they were on sale in the fall and they may not be again. The first is Ghost Runner, which looks like a crazy parkour samurai kill your enemies in one go but you have to continually be moving so you don't get shot so you don't die kind of game i've played the demo it's fantastic it's a lot of fun it looks beautiful it plays well i'm not sure if it's really my kind of game because even the demo was giving me a lot of frustration but i think for people out there who love this kind of game say like shinobi this is well worth checking out and if you want the demo is still available to play so i would say before you buy this one go ahead and play the demo see if this game is really for you it's not overly expensive for a new game but i'm cheap i would love to have it on sale ghost runner would be about 26 dollars at base so again hopefully we'll get at least a bit of a sale on that one and the other one would be super liminal Superliminal, it's only $20 at base, and I'm sure that it's probably worth it. I just don't know what the game time would actually be for me. It is, again, a new game this year. It is a puzzle game, so of course I want to play it. It is a puzzle game that plays with perspective, and I just love the way it looks. I love the way that the trailer plays around with the perspective. It just seems so innovative that I, I really want to play this game. So I'm hoping to see a sale on it, but I don't think $20 is too much for it at base, but that's really up to you and how much you think it's worth. Okay, next section. This section, you may think it's a little weird at first, but I'm going to bring it up at the end of the section. So this is an EA section. Let's talk about a few of the games that I think might be good from EA. So the first one would be Unravel, a kind of cute puzzle game where you're a ball of yarn that kind of comes to life in humanoid form and you have to keep your string going and find objects along the way. So you have to be really careful about how much of the string you're leaving behind and it just looks really cute and also has puzzles to it. I think this is probably going to be worth playing. So there's both Unravel and Unravel 2. They were both at 75% off during that sale which made them about $6 each. The next would be A Way Out. This is a co-op prison escape game. And that basically is enough to sell me on, do I want to play this game? Yes, I do. But it also looks like a lot of fun from the trailer. That game was 70% off, so that was about $10 in the sale. The next up would be a big one. This is Star Wars Fallen Order. This game was also, I believe, new this year. It's going to be in the $60 range. That's that's a big ask for somebody like me. But something that Darren has pointed out to me and something that I want to point out to all of you, EA is running a thing through Steam that you may not have seen called EA Play, which is about $5 a month. Now with that $5 a month, you could play all four of the games that I've just recommended, as well as the Burnout games, the Star Wars Battlefront games, Mass Effect games, Dead Space games, the new FIFA, the new Madden, as well as other things like Sims, Mirror's Edge, even Plants vs. Zombies, and Peggle, if that's your thing. It just seems like a fantastic deal that I'm kind of, I mean, I'm the type of person I love to buy the game, I like to own the game, but There are a lot of these games, I mean, if you can finish Star Wars Fallen Order in a month, you're going to save yourself so much money. And there are other games in there that I think if you can just try some of these to even see if they're your thing, maybe you haven't tried Mass Effect or Dead Space or some of these other series, this is a great way to jump into it at a low cost. So my recommendation would actually be maybe don't buy them. If you want more than one game, I'd say it's probably worth just give EA Play a try. I haven't yet, but that is something that I'm going to be doing very soon. 
my last section is games to play on the cheap. <laughs> so a few that I noticed that I thought were really good deals that I think would be well worth playing. One is Doom 2016. Now you could get the whole giant Doom bundle if you want, but I'm kind of just more interested in playing the newer games. And Doom 2016 was six dollars during the fall sale. It was a huge discount. I think that it's probably going to be worth the six dollars even if I just do the single player campaign. Doom Eternal also was good. That was 67% off, $22, but that for me is still a little bit much, but I could probably see myself playing Doom 2016 for six. Next up is one of our earliest games that we played for the Filling in the Gaps podcast, and that is the Talos Principle. I noticed in the fall sale that the Talos Principle was 90% off. It was $2. If you've not played it and you like games like Portal or Cube, spelled with a Q, or any of the other first-person puzzle games that we've talked about, give Talos Principle a try. It's a great game and it's worth so much more than $2. The last one I want to talk about is a game called Semblance. Now, Semblance was 75% off, meaning it was it's only $10 at base, so it's $2.50, and I expect it to do this again. Hopefully you're seeing a bit of the trailer now in the video, but if you're just listening to the audio, Semblance is essentially a puzzle platformer where you can reshape the world around you. It just looks so creative and so original, and it will probably be incredibly frustrating but you know what i want to give it a try and i really want to give it a try and i hope that some other people will too like i said it just looks very interesting and i'd be very curious to see what other people think of it and that's it that's my list for the steam winter sale this year there should be a link now to darren's video over in the corner if you're on youtube and in the show notes if you're listening to just the audio i hope that you find some fantastic deals, and feel free to let us know what deals that you found good in our comments. Happy shopping!